Hello and welcome back to another MotoGP21 breakdown video because today Marsden have released some more MotoGP21 footage and a bit more information about how the brake temperature system will in fact work so there is a whole trailer to go along with it. it's only a minute long so I'll leave a link to the original in the description so you can go and watch that first if you don't want to hear me talking over it and also I'll leave a link down to my other MotoGP21 breakdown videos because last week of course they released actual gameplay with the long lap penalty so if you haven't seen that i do urge you to go check that out but we'll get straight into this we'll st uh, we'll press play Maybe obviously free. it is just a trailer so there's not a massive amount to really talk about until it actually gets into showing off the ui and things like that so not all racetracks are created equal neither are the brakes motor gb21 twisty circuits demand smaller discs whilst other tracks require bigger discs which ensure steadier temperatures and here we go, the first point to pause is the UI. So obviously very similar to the current year's game, however, there is now the front and rear brake between the tyres and the fuel, obviously the tyres at the top, fuel at the bottom just like they are in MotoGP20, it seems like it's fairly similar, just the UI is uh, now white rather than black. But you can see here, obviously you can select your front and rear brake, so if we advance forward it actually goes into that menu, so you've got all the front brake discs you can actually use here, so there is a 320mm carbon, a 320 millimeter carbon with a high mass, a 340 carbon, and another 340 with a high mass as well. So the lightest one is the 320, obviously with 850 grams. You can see it takes quite a long time to heat up. However, it keeps that heat very well. You see four bars for the cooling, also four, bar four bars for the heating. So it'll take you a bit of time to get the temperature up into that break. However, once you've got it up, it will stay there fairly easily. So Perhaps for qualifying, that might not be a bad choice. You can obviously stick that in. You can go around on your at lap, just slam on the brakes randomly, like throughout the lap, get that brake up to temperature, and just go for it on the lap. And you don't have to worry about the the brake cooling down a little bit. But that's obviously the lightest brake with 850 grams. Whether that's gonna you know change your feeling on the front, depending on the weight, I, I doubt it. To be honest, I doubt there'll be a massive difference in that area because obviously you'll probably feel the heat a lot more than you'll feel the slight weight change. But it'll be interesting to see what kind of part that plays in there. So obviously we've got then the 320 high mass, which is 1,000 grams, but that's got three bars on the heating, two bars on the cooling, so a little bit easier to get up to temperature than the original. But I'm guessing by the same token, obviously. The first one will take a while to get up to temperature, but it will be harder to overheat because it'll take a while to build up that heat. And it obviously takes half half the time to actually cool down. So if you get it too hot, it'll cool down quicker, but it also will go under temperature fairly easily as well. So that's a two, three, twenty break this. You obviously got to pick out of the two of those if you want to use one of those, which one you want to go for. So the two, three, forties, they get up to temperature a lot quicker than the others. So you can see obviously the 340 without the high mass, the 1000 gram one, that's got two heating times, so it takes half the time of the 320 disc such a heat up, but also half the time to cool down. But it's a similar amount of cooling down time to the high mass 320. So I would probably suggest that maybe the 340 will be better to go with than the 320, but it's going to be all about experimentation. It is going to be quite fun to try and figure that out. And then there also is then the 340 high mass, which really heats up quickly. It's only got one bar for that, and it also cools down very fast as well. So that's going to be quite hard to keep in the correct temperature window, I assume. At the bottom there is tips as well, so the choice of brake disc to install is essential before taking to track. Diameter and thickness being equal, a carbon brake disc is lighter than a steel brake disc. A larger diameter disc offers better performance, while a thicker disc better absorbs the heat. But in both cases, we have increased weight, and this affects unsuspended rotating masses. So it is going to have an effect on the front suspension, which I guess you would assume, since we've got an improved suspension system, and they wouldn't lift the weight if it didn't do anything. But I would feel like you'll feel the heat of the brake more than you'll feel the weight. I'm guessing there will be a difference, of course, but probably more minor compared to actually the temperature of the brake. Their increase reduces the bike's agility, making entering bends more difficult. So it's going to be harder to get around the corner if you've got a heavier brake on the front. But carbon discs have to reach up to 200 degrees in order to work properly. These discs guarantee top performance at temperatures of, and then it kind of ends because they haven't scrolled down. So that's the front brake disc. If we move forward to the rear brake disc that they show off in a second. So you can see they're going on to the rear brake disc now. There is only actually a choice of two for the rear brake. And they're pretty similar by the looks of it. The heating time obviously is four on the 200 mil, and then the 220 mil is only three, but then the cooling times are inverse. So there's three, three cooling on the, the 200 mil, and then four on the 220. So I, I'd say there's probably not gonna be, I don't know, it'd be kind of hard to pick between those two. It depends how the game is. 
Obviously, it, we need to try it before you can pick your break. Obviously, you can't pick it based on this trailer. But it will be interesting to see the experimentation. You've got to have a bit of a play around. Obviously, the tyre system has a similar thing, obviously, with the heating and the cooling, things like that. And that was fairly quick to master. If you were overheating a soft tyre, you'd try the medium. The heat, the medium was still overheating, you'd try the hard. And, you know, if you didn't get a tyre that was overheating, you'd stick with the one you're on. So it was fairly easy to pick. Obviously, there's a little bit more choice with the front brake because you've got four discs. Uh, only two on the rear, so the rear will probably be quite easy to pick your preference. And, of course, it is meant to change track to track. Of course, Qatar being a bit cooler because it's at night. That might help you out, and then you've got tracks like Magello that are extremely hot, and you know, Hareth as well, uh, places like that. So it will be interesting to see kind of how the temperature on track actually affects what brake disc you use. I think it's going to be a really, really good system. It's nice to see they've shown it off, and actually does look like it's going to change the game substantially. So here they move on to a bit of a comparison. The temperature directly affects brake's performance, so choose your discs wisely for the most effective results. And you can see here on the left hand side we've got the two cold, perfect in the middle, too hot on the right. And you can see perfect hits the trajectory well, too hot and too cold go both just as wide as each other. So it seems like having a really cold brake is just as bad as having a really hot brake. So there's no your brakes and nobody will stop you. Obviously it had a, a good shot of the Brembo logo there as well. So that's the brake system, pretty much. There's not much to say about it, really. Uh, well, there is, but I mean, what we've not already said, I mean. So obviously it said you need to be in about the 200 to... It looks like 200 to 400 will be your good range, because you can see it said that you need 200 earlier on on the tips at the bottom. You can see the perfect in the middle here has 363. So you probably... probably maybe it's between that 200 to 500, because you can see on the too hot there, it's a... 885 is way too hot and 151 is too cold so you're gonna have to obviously try and manage that however the rear brake here seems to be the same temperature for all of them so i'm assuming that it'll be easier to change the front brake temperature than the rear because the front brake is obviously a lot bigger so it's going to heat up a lot more when you use it whereas the rear brake thought smaller so probably probably be a bit easier to save the rear temperature if you need to because you use more front brake anyway but there is just one last thing i wanted to talk about here and it is at this point here, so I've not actually seen anybody else talk about this, and I'd actually completely skimmed over it till uh, someone mentioned it to me. But in the previous video, we noted about this hood here, and I said it looked a lot like a Ducati gauge when they were playing as Jack Miller. Now, the gauge is still the same as in that video, and they're on a Yamaha here, so I think that does kind of put a bit of a hole in our theory about the gauge changing when you change bike. Whether that's just something they haven't implemented properly yet, and that they've all got the Ducati gauge for now... I don't know, but we're so close to release, I would say that those kind of fundamental things would have been sorted out before because you could do that last year. You wouldn't need to know what the new bike looked like to, you know, put the right shaped gauge in because they'll, they'll still be the same. So I presume that this is just the hood that you'll get for every bike and it just kind of looks similar to the Ducati one. Whether that's intentional just to make it look a bit more realistic or whether that's just unintentional, I'm not too sure. I'll put up a picture actually of the Ducati gauge because I realised last time I didn't do that. And you might not know what the Ducati gauge looks like yourself. So I put a little picture up of one of them there. And you can see the similarities are fairly obvious. The shape is fairly similar. They've got the lights up the side as well. So that's just one more thing I thought I'd note from this video. But that's pretty much everything from this video. Obviously it was only a one minute clip. It was sort of more trailer as well. There wasn't really any gameplay. It was just more going through the menus. This is the only little bit of gameplay you actually see. And I did obviously pick out the thing about the gauge. But I hope you did enjoy that video. If you haven't seen the previous MotoGP 21 breakdown videos that I've done, I will leave them in the description. And of course, like I said, I'll leave a link to this trailer so you can watch it without me talking over it. And if you are new to the channel, do feel free to like and subscribe because I'll be doing more MotoGP 21 content. You know, as soon as Milestone release any gameplay or as soon as the game comes out, I'll be playing it a lot. So if you want to see lots of gameplay of this game, you want to see breakdowns, analysis, you just want to see some funny moments on the game, this is probably the best place to be. So if you did enjoy that one, please do like and subscribe. But I hope you did enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe and I shall see you in the next one.